Okay, I'm already here. Are we all ready? And roll. We got a we got a full house here, guys. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, I guess the light is on. Hello, everybody at home. Somebody watching uh, Facebook? <clears throat> yeah, I got you. Okay, so we're online. Everybody can hear me okay? We're just using the, the uh, speaker on the computer. Are we okay with that? Okay, so somebody's telling me they just did an open house. They had out in Whitby there. They had like, I think, five people yesterday and maybe eight people. Uh, sorry, five people on Saturday and about eight people on, on uh, Sunday. Uh, this particular, particular uh, listing, the offers aren't to be presented till Thursday. And the curious thing about it was that uh, even though we had five people at the open house on the Saturday, eight people on the Sunday, we hadn't, uh, we only had one or two showings that were booked online through MLS. So tell me, somebody tell me here, is the market uh, cruising along or are we starting to feel a bit of a blip? Dun, dun, dun. The weather was good, yeah. I'm looking at Nelson here. Nelson and I sort of keep track of the stuff here. Did you notice a bit of a pullback in the last uh, week or so? No, okay. So Nelson's Nelson's experience different than mine. Good. Fully offer up in Kleinberg. Fully offer in Kleinberg. Oh, wow. So. So so sold for one so more than one point four was this one point three and a whole off offer. So we've been telling everybody to to like make it a big drop. Like if you're if your target's one point four, we're telling everybody to go like eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand, not one point three. But in this case, one point three was okay and it worked out. In so 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 yeah, they're not doing that. They don't do long climbers. Climbers are a little slow. Is that yeah, what you said? Different world up there. Crazy they don't play okay that's something to think about too so if you're doing stuff out in <clears throat> kingston or belleville maybe you got to consider that too but if you're in Toronto, if you got a property here you guys tell me you got a property that's worth uh two million two point one million dollars would you if you saw a price at 1.5 would that's uh would that be logical or would that be uh silly one point three eight eight okay two point one if you saw if you saw a listed for 1.5 would that did that turn you off or that be um be a steal if you can get it, right? I don't know. The logic is there. We don't know. I guess you get you gotta look at each case individual. We had one also last week where um there was like 30 showings. Offer date was uh wasn't wasn't supposed to happen for, for a little bit uh, longer, and a bully offer came in, and so we had to change everything. And uh the person that had the bully offer thought he was gonna win, and he ended up being last and lost. That happens all the time. I, I just made I just made that up, but that's okay. But that happens all the time. So 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 somebody's gone ahead and they've they've changed everything. They've changed all the rules because of the bully offer, and they've changed the offer date. And then rather than Thursday, they made it today, and they've notified everybody, and they got all these offers come in. And the guy that started the whole action is the guy that lost, anyways. So 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 so, 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 you so if you're a listing agent, offer, you don't need to change the offer. You leave the offer date as is, and just say bully offer being presented tonight at eight p.m. No, you have to change. No, you don't. But you have to change. You have to. You have to. You if you if you're uh, you're taking if you've got on MLS that offers are going to be next Thursday and you're taking offers today, you've got to let everybody know. No, but let everybody know. But no, you, no, no. Even the guys that haven't shown the property. Even the people that have not shown the property. No, no. But you're going to send a not the people, not, not the people have not shown the property. You got to let you got to let the agents that have not shown the property that you change instructions. Yeah, but even if you. Left the offer date during the trip. If I have not shown the property, I didn't know you changed it because you never notified. No, but you change it to say bully offer date presented tonight. That message goes to the people that no, see it on the list. No, so, uh, yeah, so you might as well. Well, you might as well take it off. If and just add, what if it doesn't go through? And you put it back June 5th. Yeah. Because right, you got to change it anyway. So, so rather, rather than stay in trouble, the, pro the problem is that you want to let. You wanted the people that haven't booked the showing, as, as Aiden said, if it's people that booked the booked the property already, booked the showing already, it's easy to contact them. But it's people that have not contacted. Right? But the, the thing that you have to remember here, though, is that our job is to get the most money for your client. So you, even you know, if you're going to accept the bully offer, if you're going to change your offer date, then you want everybody to know. So you you want everybody to know that you're doing offers today. That's that's the whole purpose, right? And that's why the the bully offers lose because you're letting everybody else in. Yeah. All right. 
where some agents get nervous and they think, well, I got a bully offer and you're vocal at six o'clock, it's five o'clock now. What do I do? Do I accept it now? So, no, you don't do anything. Okay. Right. Last thing, we went to offer presentation. Uh, it was listed at 1.3. Then at nine o'clock, we said the bully offer. This guy on book your page said, uh, you have sent a message to everybody. You have time till 4 a.m. the same night for everybody to wow. bring your offer. Four a.m. But nobody's gonna check. Who's gonna say the offer at four a.m. Legal or everything's legal. As as, you know, everything's legal. You know, as long as you're sleeping, but everybody's sleeping. It goes back to what I just said. Are, are you are you doing your client any favors by doing that? Yeah. Is it the time that you have to give it to the agency? Yeah. Yeah. leading money on the No, page. but you have to make it sensible. I mean, no, no. But if you have really good offer that you feel nobody's going to beat that offer, but you only have two hours, it's okay. Then, then you got to use all two hours. So basically, you give notification and yeah, you, have, you have to give all two hours. But you, but it has to be. You have to be able to be a bit of a mind reader to know what the what a good price is, right? Because you don't know if, you don't know if it's a good price or not. You got one hundred fifty thousand under market. So if you're a buying agent, by the way, if you're a buying agent, you got an offer that your buyer wants, and it's and they're doing offers on Tuesday, and you want a bully offer, you're going to go bully offer with the two hour vocal day. <laughs> There's something I just said. If you're a listing agent, you're not going to do that. You're going to wait. So 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 it's. It's two sides of the story, right? Depends depends how you're how you you know who you represent. But that's good news. That's good things to talk about. Multiple offers, good things to talk about, right? I hate to say this, this is a bad thing here, but everybody we're talking about here just now about that uh, thing in Stony Creek or Hamilton. Everybody hearing that news where the landlord uh, oh, sorry. Got shot, well, yeah, it's true. Shot shot two tenants. It's pretty it's pretty morbid here, but during COVID we had those tenants that were just tenants from hell, right? So now you gotta remember tenants from hell is also uh, landlords from hell, be careful. Right? You got you got those tenants out there that haven't paid for four years and the poor guy's you know ready to go bankrupt on his own house because he can't pay the mortgage on the house and the tenants stop paying the rent. You think guy's gonna get mad? I don't, I'm not saying this would happen in this case here, but but if it did happen in this case here, it'd be something that, uh, I don't know, something to consider that it's a two-way street, Mr. Mr. Landlord, or sorry, Mr. Tenant, right? It's an awful thing, but I don't, I'm not sure what happened. Obviously, the guy the guy had, uh, from what I heard this morning, the, the owner had a gun collection that were legal gun collections. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a stolen gun right? This guy had legal, this guy had registered legal guns. The tenants somehow ticked them off, and I heard that the tenants made a mess of his house or something. Not necessarily not paying rent, but they made a mess of the house. He didn't like it. They probably told him to f off. And so only I watched this. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not it's not uh, good at all. Okay, so we haven't had a meeting for two weeks, right? So I remember how many listings did we have this time two weeks ago? 11, Pretty close, eh? 11,596. How many do we have today? 4,591. Pretty close. 515 as of last night. People do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did mine last night. So. What did you have today? 4,591. 500, okay, so I did this last night at 7 o'clock. We had 12,515. Now it's, uh, it's uh, what, 1 o'clock and we have 12,599. So we've had 91. So we had 75 new listings in one day. In one morning. One morning, right? So that so that means that tells me that, that the market's starting to pick up. Um if I said to you, if you had a buyer that said, I want to wait for the prices to drop, you know what you know, it's past tense, right? Because prices dropped in January. Right. And we and and since then prices have been going up. I have no idea what the prices are this this uh, this May, but just to give you an idea, just so you know what's going on. May of last year, the average price is one point two. So this year, it's probably going to be one point. Well, I don't know. In April, it was one point one five zero. If it goes up fifty thousand dollars, do you think the average price in uh, in one month is that possible? March it was one million one zero eight, and April is one million fifty three. So it's about forty thousand dollars. So I bet we're going to be almost uh, almost 1.2 from uh, and last year's 1.2. So we're, now we're starting to 
the prices are now starting to, to get equal to last year. Just to just to remind you, 2021 was was the uh, was a big year too, right? But 2022 February was the highest price, and it started to decline since then. And hopefully, if not May, certainly June, we may hit last year's prices. That's what I'm projecting. So that that's good news. Um, as far as units go, the units are still down. Uh, well, they were down anyways. They were down what? Uh, sales were down. We started off what minus 40%, minus 37%, 18%, 6%. Uh, now last month is minus 5%. This month it's going to be plus 18% for units. So that's good news. Plus plus 18%. Plus, plus 18 the market, the market was very slow. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, that's right. So if you take the first uh, 28 days in May, I like I like having Shiv here because I have all the answers. Yes, sir. In, in, in 2022, we had 10,895 sales. In 2022, sorry, 2021 was 8,000, sorry, 10,895. 2022 is 6,579. This year, 7,791. So, yes, it's up 18% from last year. It's down from 2021, right? But we're talking about positive things, right? The market's going up. So, that, that's, that's how we're doing it, plus 18%. If we break that down, the freeholds are actually up 12%, and the condominiums, believe it or not, are up 31%. <coughs> All, all except for one condo. Anybody want to come? Anybody want to buy a condo downtown? Still haven't sold that thing. I'll really tell. I dropped the price. I dropped. I dropped the price. One hundred thousand dollars. Change the agent. Change the agent. Change, change the landlord. 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 Uh, the condominium. So the view out the window, you get to look at other parking lots and other buildings. So, so is that the problem with my unit? No. What do you think the price? What do you think the real problem is? Price. <laughs> I think it's because it has a parking space. It's got to be. Oh, yeah. It's got to be. Parking lot these days are definitely Bank of Canada. If anybody heard rumors, and again, you got to use this information to motivate your clients to do something, whether it's a seller or a buyer. Bank of Canada has, in, has had rumors out there talking about increasing the rates again. Has anybody heard that? No. Whether it's true or not true doesn't really matter. You want to use it to your advantage, whatever the case is. So, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Uh, uh, buyer, yeah, you think that the prices have dropped? They have. They did drop in January. Now they're starting to go up. But now we're worried about maybe the interest rates cracking up a little bit. Well, that, uh, you know, may you want to motivate yourself to, to buy sooner than later. All right. Mr. Seller, you might want to put your property in the market now. The market, the prices have dropped. It's starting to go up. We talk about decreasing interest rates. You might want to think about selling now. When it happens, it doesn't happen. We don't know. But you're looking for triggers. You're looking for things to talk about. You're looking for things to, to happen over there. Right? The next bank of Canada, they're going to look at our um, the rates themselves, and that starts on June the seventh. If they were to increase, it's not going to be much. And why they would increase it is the the last um, uh, inflation rate was four. I'm guessing right now. I want to say it was like four point. Okay, I have to guess. It was only it was like four point seven. It went up to four point eight or something. That was like point one difference, right? But it's way less than the eight percent we had, uh, you know, some time ago. So it's still better off that way. But it's still not at the two percent that the government wants. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if they raise it, maybe I don't know, fifteen basis points, quarter basis points, something like that. If if they raise it at all, but I wouldn't also be surprised if they decide to wait till July to do it. Anybody have any input in that? What surprises me is that even though the the Interest rates or mortgage rate this time last year would have been what? What what could you get a mortgage for this time last year? What can you so two point two? What can you get it for this year? Five. Okay. So even though it's double, right? I assume that the mortgage rates have doubled too. Like the actual payments are probably double. How is it that we're selling eighteen percent more than we did last year? So that tells me that maybe the first time buyers have knocked out. Maybe these are move up buyers. Maybe there's people that aren't aren't as sensitive to the interest rates as maybe a first time buyer might or as, as much as the media wants you to believe because because interest rates do go up and the media gets onto it and everybody woe is me and everybody took price but but they're still up 18 percent so it tells me that the move up buyers are the ones that are, that are creating that does anybody have any thoughts on that 
you have any first time buyers that who's got first time buyers that were in the market two months ago out of the market today because they don't qualify? All right, they don't like what they qualify, right? So, anyways, you use those uses to your advantage. Did anybody do the realtor request last uh, last week? Realtor request? I think it was like. Michael, so, conference so there's 10,000 people that went there. So I'm not sure how many people here went. Was it good, bad, ugly? Michael, you were you were there all day? I think always everywhere. Even one surprise too. Yeah. So was it worth it? Was it nice? Good? Um, it was pretty exhausting. around all those tote bags, all that free stuff. <laughs> Feel like you're going to the exhibition. Did, did anybody uh, take in any of the any of the speakers that they had, like the Mark? Yeah, Mark. I was I was going to print that out. No, the thing you gave me, I couldn't print out. You took you took. You can find a webinar on that, or maybe bring. I can put it in the better. So Mark Weisler did a session on uh, on the Trust and Real Estate Act, which has been delayed until they come up with some some more things. But he came up with an agent uh, real estate agent workbook. Is that available online? It's not an agent workbook. for landlords. I thought I thought I read agent. I thought agent. Oh, I thought no, there's something else. There's another document. I saw an agent. Pages for us to subscribe based on the new things. That's where the agency explained the, the guide. Yeah. 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 The agency explained guide. So yeah. that was there. So that's. But you've reviewed it, but it hasn't been launched yet. No. Yeah. So I'm not going to get, I've got other stuff I want to talk about today, but I'll get involved with the Trusted Real Estate Act later on. Other than, other than to say that a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to you about the new Trusted Real Estate Act, which is going to allow us to disclose the contents of competing offers. And just so you know that uh, we can decide what, what we can disclose, the seller. So the seller can, the seller can tell us what to disclose. So the seller might say, I want you to disclose how many offers there are. Okay, there's five offers. That's all, that's all the seller might say, I want you to disclose my the closing date of my of the competing offers because that's important to me. Or I want you to disclose the down the deposit each offer has, or the price of each offer, or conditions of each offer, or none of the above. So the seller's in complete control of what he wants to share, what he doesn't want to share. And then, and then I talked about uh, about a month ago about this open offer that was $50 a month. Open offer is something that Korea did without, without the um, consultation of real estate boards. Surprise. So open offer is an Australian thing. And I'm reading more into it now. And they're actually, I thought they'd be the largest supplier in Australia. They're not. I think they're number three or four of the software, the software provider for Australia. They've got about 4,000 clients in Australia. I'm thinking, wait a minute here. Why, why would Korea want to do that? Korea's got to have 200,000 agents or something. But anyways. So instead, I think what we're going to do with when the trust real estate that comes into effect, I think we'll probably be using the SkySlope platform for any multiple offers. Um, and I'll get into that in a bit there about how that all works. But the question I have, uh, just this, I had a question for couple of guys downstairs. Is anybody here getting a little overwhelmed with the tech? Because it keep changing it, right? Keep changing, keep on changing the tech all the time, right? The tech, tech has changed. So, but the fact is it's there. The fact is it's not going to change. The fact is it's not going to go away. The fact is this is the way the business is going. It's high tech. So, you know, I know a lot of people here go to the gym a couple hours a day, an hour a day. I don't know how many, a, lot, a lot of people go to the gym every morning. I said to somebody else, somebody goes to the mosque quite often. Or somebody will go to, uh, I don't know, driving range or something for, for quite often. I, th I think in your routines, you got you to put an hour aside a day for tech. For what? For tech. Technology. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like looks like she's. <laughs> no, it's not. Because whether because whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, tech is tech is here. It's here. So it's not going to go away just because you say, "Oh, I don't want to do it," or "That's stupid," or "That takes a waste of time." It's it's happening anyway. So so I don't know. How do you eat an elephant? One one bite at a time, right? 
Uh, the building can change your equipment every six months. Uh, that's that's <laughs> something. <laughs> the, the risk keeps going through these different things. It's frustrating because we pay you crap to do this. And it's really like, yeah. Not All right, so let's so let's stay okay. Let's stay this guy something. So did everybody get the uh, email last week saying that authentic sign is going to disappear on June thirtieth? That was the first I ever heard of it. Did anybody else have any any inkling that that was happening? Did it, was there anybody that sort of gives a heads up? Was anybody a realtor request that said, "Oh, by the way, everybody here, authentic sign is going to go. You might want to think about something else." That was instead, instead they talked about other goofy things, right? Anyway, so sky slope. I don't know if it, I've always, whenever I do train, right, to help train or ask people to, to help them, or people ask me to help them. What I try to do is, is first thing the agents will do is they'll bring up their pen and they'll bring up the paper. I'll start, I'll start making notes on how to do it. And the first thing I tell them, take the paper and throw it away. I don't want you writing any paper. Why? Because that same agent, when I see the next month and they ask about it, they say, okay, I, I talked about it last time. You know, where are my notes? I haven't got my notes. Right? <laughs> Anybody here? When when the notes are all, everything you need to know is on the screen. All you have to do is learn how to read and you have to learn how to read a book. Read a book from top top left corner to the top right corner and then you go the next line, the next line. What what I notice when I, when I teach people, if there's a little if there's a little light, a little thing shine over here, their eyes go to there and then also the eyes go over here and then that. Anyway, so it's just like reading a book. Sky slope. Digisign is no different than authenticide, but at the same time, if you if you're really hung up on authenticide or if you're really hung up on DocuSign, you can buy these programs for about 100, what, $130 for authenticide and $178 for DocuSign. If you're really stuck in your old ways, you can buy the authenticide standalone. It's not hooked up with Trev, but it's 130 bucks. Myself, I do. I pay for the authentic sign. I pay the hundred thirty. I've been doing that for years because when I when I have something come to me, I don't want to have to log into Toronto Real Estate Board to open up my authentic sign. I go straight to authentic sign. That's it. So so if you're really freaked out about learning something different, you just got got authentic sign figured out. You don't want to learn another one. Pay the hundred thirty bucks and get your get your authentic sign separate. So that, that so solves that. Office, yeah. What? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about authentic sign right now. Now on authentic sign, we've got we've got 30 days. We've got from June 30th. So what I, what I recommend you do every hour or sorry, every week, once an hour, half hour, 10 minutes, sit down there and practice it. Get a buddy, send them an offer, right? Get them to, to, to send it back to you and get to understand how, how it's working. Right. But the first thing you have to do is you have to set up for sky slope forms. I could be wrong here, but I could be right. When you go to Toronto MLS, when you sign in and you go to Sky Slope Forms, there's a new button there called Sky Slope Forms. The first time you go into Sky Slope Forms, you have to go to the profile and set up your profile. And what you do on that profile will show up on your Sky Slope Forms. So if you put Claire P. Fulton, all right, then Claire P. Fulton is going to show up on my offers. Fire P phone is going to show up on it. If I put if I put uh, 2911 Candy Road or if I put uh, 156 Duncan Mills Road, wherever it is, as being the home, that's going to show up on any offers that you do from that profile. Once you set up your profile, when you go to Sky Slope on Toronto Malesh, you can go to the waffles, you know, the waffles, the little, the little nine dot thing you go to the waffles, and there you'll have a selection to pick Sky Slope forms or, or Sky Slope Digisign. <clears throat> If you, if you try to log into that without without setting up your profile, you will not see Digisign. In fact, you won't see Sky Slope Forms either. It'll take you to another another program. Question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So so we are also that's right. Someone else can bring that up too. So we yeah. Now that's the same as James talked about. As an office. We are probably one of the few offices. We're actually probably the first office in, in Toronto to, to join to join Sky Slope, and we did it for uh, we we joined Sky Slope about five years ago for compliance for FinTrack. So I I know we got all the FinTrack stuff, and I can see real quick. So when you sign into Sky Slope with your 
with your email that we have for the SkySlope office, then the two will connect. So you'll be able to have, so the two will connect from your SkySlope suite. When you do SkySlope forms or SkySlope offers or DigiSigns, it'll, it'll all connect to your office SkySlope. Some, some people have not signed into it. That's fine. We don't expect you to. You can if you want. But just, just to tell you what we've done for the last five years on SkySlope, every time you've sent us a listing or every time you've done an offer, we've uploaded it into this program. This program is available to you, so you can actually go in now. You can, if you want to see a deal you did five years ago and you haven't got your files, you can actually go to this program. It's sitting there for you. Okay, so, so we've got all this data for you. And now you've got the SkySlope DigiSign, so now the DigiSign is going to be meshed in there as well. So for us, it's actually a good thing because it's, it's going to be a little more interactive than Authentisign. But for you guys, it's bad news because it's something you have to learn. So how are we going to teach you? Sorry, yeah, Julian. Yes, whatever, whatever, yeah. So the question was, should, should I stay with my DigiSign, or sorry, DocuSign or switch? Personally, up to you. So, I agree. Yeah, I agree. But they're not, not identical, but they are identical. I'm glad you used that word. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So let me let me just let me do a commentary, and Julian Julian set me up. Whether it's DocuSign, whether it's DigiSign, whether it's AuthentiSign, whether it's uh, who, there's a bunch of other ones out there wow. too. Whatever is out there, right? There's a whole bunch of them. They're all the same, except they're different colors. And maybe, maybe, maybe start on the left on one and start right at another one. I think authenticine, right? The new authenticine, you have the authenticine classic, you started on the left, and the authenticine, the new authenticine, you start on the right. Is that right? So, so, so people, believe it or not, people got confused on that. Anyway, so all you're doing, you're taking your documents. You're uploading them to the to the program, whether whatever program it is, and then you're creating a signature. Who's going to sign this thing? Me and my client. You're going to put their client's email address in, your email address in, whether it be from a manually or whether it's from a contact list. You can always save the contact list for the next time. And then so so you, you're going to say, okay, I want this guy to sign here, and you put little circles. I want an initial here, put the initials in there, and, and everybody, and then you just send that off and wait goes. Doesn't matter whether it's authenticated. Did you sign authenticated? They're all the same. Just that one's blue and one's red. The yeah, but you build contacts as you go. All right. So I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time and have my sky slope with all the contacts. I would do it as I go and add contacts as I'm as I'm doing the trades. But you may want to download the documentation from authentic. So the other thing here, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute here. Okay. So what what you also need to do? Okay, so that's that's the digit sign. Okay, we're okay with all that. We're going to have to do some training sessions. There are some training sessions right now that, that Treb has done on. They've done webinars and they've got training sessions, all types of things. Take advantage of those. Just, just go to SkySlope Training. You'll see it there. There's one that's an hour long. I'm going to put it into our, our uh, thing that I've got the uh, link for that. And it pretty much explains the whole forms and the DigiSign and how everything works. So we'll 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 let you know how that's happening. We've got 30 days to do it. So but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be proactive yourself and at least bring it up, practice, get a partner, myself, anybody else, Nelson, someone else you're dealing with, send yourself offers back and forth, see how it works. If you have been using digits or sorry, authentisign, I'm not sure how long this is for. Is this forever? It doesn't say it doesn't say. So there are instructions on there. If you've got transaction kits or even um, not even the transaction kit, but just the offers and the sign, you want to download those uh, those things somewhere you, so you can access them later. And there are instructions on how to do that. If you go to Toronto Less, you'll see that there's instructions on how to how to download and how to save the authenticine information. And again, it just takes some time to be able to do that. Is that the office on Skype? Yeah, but sometimes you get offers that, that didn't go through, right? Sometimes, sometimes you have an offer that didn't go through. Sometimes you have a template. Maybe you've got your own templates. Who anybody here use their own templates when they do that? Maybe they don't. Right? Some people do. Some people don't. 
it doesn't affect us downstairs and we're going to be typing the office to them to you anyways and how the, it's up to you how what you can do with them after that but the digital sign is it's different um but it's the same so i'm not sure we're we're going to have to do some sessions i wanted to do something So the last thing I want you to do is think I'm lost. I don't know what to do. If you're in the middle of a transaction, you need some help, then you're going to contact one of us here, and we'll certainly walk you through all all of that. So, have you done it yet, Sky Slope Nelson? Uh, sign something. <laughs> Jenny sent me something. I signed it. It's exactly the same how you signed. Yeah. <laughs> You just just push just click sign here sign here <laughs> okay now you see what they're doing see how realm is going to come up realm's going to be here in, in uh, probably november and uh, realm's going to replace stratus and you notice how trevor right now they give you the option you can use matrix or you can use stratus or use realm and but you can do it for for 60 days and then you have to cho choose again you have to choose between matrix and realm because a lot of people are still doing the matrix right so um anyways that's i, I always go with realm if you're asking my opinion i would not do matrix matrix is for for people that are outside our board who've used matrix like guys from guys from peterborough guys from kingston guys from outside Trev, they, they use matrix so as those boards join Treb, they're going to probably use that format. Whereas if you guys are starting brand new, I suggest you just go with Realm. If you're going to learn something new, you might as well learn that. Anybody here use Matrix at all? Or? I know I know people at home do. So so Matrix is. Have you looked at Realm yet? And Matrix too. Is it similar? Same thing. It's been sending around all the bugs. You find bugs in Realm. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of things in search that are yeah. yeah. There's a lot of features that they left out in Realm and have had a stress for search. Yeah, okay. So Realm's not uh well, yeah. Goes back to what I say, right? I mean, I've never seen a I've never seen a new program that's better than the old program. We just try to keep trying to make what you look for. Or is that am I just being uh, I'm being too negative for a lot of this. Not mine. <laughs> Some experts say the mortgage rates could drop next year. So that's good news. So, so, so regardless of what I just said, they're so, so expected to drop because eventually the government is going to hit their 2% inflation rate. So eventually they're going to hit it. So once they hit it, then they will be able to reduce the rates. So that they're talking about that, right? The legacy rates for credit cards and car loans are going up. And so they're suspecting that maybe we might see that in the mortgages. I don't think we're gonna see it in, in traditional mortgages. I, I bet you in the high ratio or sort of the, the uh, private lenders, I could see those guys having issues and uh, maybe not being able to keep playing. Um, the article does say that Canadians, though, will give up their car or they won't make the car payment, they won't make their credit card payment, but they'll always make the mortgage payment. Because mortgages is like that's, you know, they can always borrow a car, but they can't borrow a house, right? So the uh, the, the liquidities are less than 1%, so it's still very, very low. But you may have clients that are out there that um, they're in that situation where maybe they do have to get out and it's best to get out earlier than later. Um, so what, what are your options? If you got somebody that we haven't had that yet, but I don't think we're gonna see it now. I was just gonna say, you may have you may have a situation where somebody sells a house for less than the mortgage that they owe or mortgages, but I haven't seen that yet. And maybe with the prices creeping up a little bit, maybe we won't see it. Hopefully we won't see it. But if it does come up, then uh, you know you gotta be on top of it. Talk to myself, Nelson, and uh, we'll be able to, uh, to help you do that as well. I think the thing that the worst thing that your clients can do, this is usually what happens, is they don't tell you, they don't, uh, they, they try to work it out, they don't talk to the lenders. Next thing you know, somebody's pounding on the door with a power sale. That that's typically what happens. People don't 
people don't address it, they just sort of, you know, hopefully it'll go away and it usually doesn't. But there are there are strategies that we can do and you've got to be concerned about uh, discharge penalties and things like that too. So be careful when you're doing all those things. Uh, there's a lot of construction going on right now in Toronto with the uh, different subways. And when you got the Crosstown line, you've got the Ontario line coming in, you've got the uh, subways being extended. And so I've got little charts here of where the Ontario line, for instance, is going. The Ontario line is, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's going to go, it's going to start at exhibition, it's going to end up at the Science Center. So all the way along that route, and, and this particular one here, they're talking about Queen Street and Young Street as being the hub. Someone's trying to sell me something. Um, so this Ontario line, so it starts off at uh, exhibition, it goes through to Queen and Young, and then it, it goes through the exhibition place, Ontario Science Center. It actually goes through Flemington Park, Thorncliffe Park, Liberty Village, and Fort Yard. So, so there's quite a few opportunities. So if you have investors thinking about buying properties for investment, you might want to consider buying a condominium or something along the, along these lines, along all these new lines that are coming along. There could be some future benefit for people who are thinking about doing that. So if you try, if you've got clients that want to invest in real estate, where should you invest? There's, there's pre-construction, obviously, but there's also existing buildings that you might be able to get some feather to. So, so pay attention to the places like that. Okay. What did Congo Wong say? There's, there's, uh, you buy anywhere up and down Young Street, right? Anywhere on the subway line, you're fine, right? So, so now it's not just the subway line. Now you've got the cross town and you've got the Ontario line as well. Home buyers are finally going back to the new build units. Remember a couple, I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago how we saw a whole bunch of people lined up at, uh, White's Road and Taunton for a new build. They're lining up there across the street just uh, trying to buy these brand new builds. So I guess they're starting to show off here now because new homes, single family new homes were up 81% in April over April last year. So that's good too, but it's still you know 81%. They still only sold a thousand units. They're supposed to be doing what, 150,000 units per year to come up to the 1.5 million. That means they should be selling Per, per month, 150,000, should be selling 10,000 per month, not a thousand. So not even close to what to what 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 we want to do. There's a vicious cycle here, right? It's kind of funny. The, the, the more that they increase the interest rates, the higher the inflation goes. So so if they increase the interest rates to to knock down the inflation, well, in fact, it adds to inflation. So how bit of a paradox there. I don't know how they balance that. You know what I'm saying? Because because the, the because the cost the cost of, cost of living is is uh, like that uh, cost of living mortgage payments are part of it. So if they increase the rates, it's going to increase the cost of living. Gas prices are going back up now too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was four point four. Sorry, four point four percent was the uh, inflation rate uh, in March. It was four point three. Two Quebec agents. Did you guys hear about this? And this is what word this is what worries me about uh, multiple offers here. We're talking about multiple offers here in Quebec. What these guys did, did and they and they had a TV show. These guys had a TV show. They're actually on what's what are those TV shows? This one's in Quebec there, but uh, what what are they? Love it and listen, listen and love it. Leave, leave, leave it and do it and whatever the shows are. These guys had a TV show. So they had a listing and to generate more activity on the listing, they had their friends put offers on the listing to, to jack up the price. Really? This, this sounds like my father, personally, he used to, he used to, he used to work on the Danforth. So that was an old Danforth truck. Danforth truck, you, 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 get your, you get your buddy, you put in an offer just to try to jack things up. It's like old school. Anyways, they got caught and, uh, and they, uh, yeah, they, fired, they fired them. Huh? How did they get caught? I thought that's not the exact one. Some Quebec version of that. How did they get caught? They were fired. They put their own offer, like their own offer. But their broker, their broker fired them, and now they're now they're caught. It was multiple. It wasn't once. They got caught on a couple. Of oh. Really? Yeah, for Instagram. Oh, you check, you check their it. <laughs> so she was a top agent, and see something silly like that, just the uh, you know for what for for what. 
For ego or for money? Okay, we've got another guy here in Ontario. He got fined $25,000. And what he had done is um, it was a pre-construction. And the pre-construction people wanted a mortgage pre-approval. So he just created one. <laughs> that, that never happened. <laughs> right? find them all. He just created one. And, and, and of course, the people he showed it to have seen more than one pre-approval letter. And they can see right away that the you know the logo wasn't right the date wasn't right the the you know the font the fuzz was the right font that's a federal show it's provincial here but now it could be federal yeah could be. Who finds so. this is a rico fund rico? yeah rico but the deal they usually ask them to change the damn <laughs> can you fix that? Yeah. Fix that time time. Time. <laughs> and then you got the rental scams out there. They're telling everybody to, to you know, maybe check your own rentals, make sure somebody isn't advertising your rental. We've seen that too. You learn something every year. I haven't haven't got this haven't got this figured out just yet, but we have a condominium that was. Completed in December 2018. And those those people that know about uh, rental units, there's rent controls for properties that were built after November the 18th, 2018. So anything that was built after November 2018 is not subject to rent controls. It, they can jack up wherever they want. So we've got a, we've got a client that wants to jack up the rent. The tenant says, and the tenant's smart, the tenant says you can't jack up the rent because the building, not the unit, the building was letting people rent the property before November 2018 while it was in occupancy. Ooh, smarty pants. Seagulls. Smart. smart. And, and what happened, according to legal opinions, that we haven't got the final opinion, legal opinion is any one of the buildings any part of the building is rented out prior to november 2018 is subject to rent control winner any <laughs> any part of the building even though even our client and, and this building here was the lower floors that they allowed people to rent out and the top floors hadn't yet and our clients the top floor our clients like 32nd floor these are like the the six seven second floor that were being done but, but because the second floor first floor did it the entire building is subject to rent controls how do, you, uh, how do you prove it? You go to MLS and look at listings and you see that people are advertising for lease in this building and prior to 2018. So, so, so you learn something every day. I would, I would have guessed, no. I would have guessed that it was not subject to rent control because it wasn't registered until 2018. But you get a smart aleck tenant. And, and if you look at Geo Warehouse, it says, the, they built December 2018, okay. which is which it is built to December 18th, and it's not subject to rent controls. But they're right. saying that we're allowing people during the right. office right. series right. to rent it out there oh, for. Right. Warehouse in December. Yeah, but MLS says that you rented it out and you had people renting out in September. Yeah. No. Okay, has anybody been using the chat AI at all? There's probably other ones out there too, right? So just to, sh just to show you where things are going, McMaster University had a, uh, a problem that they, that they wanted to solve. They wanted to create some type of vaccine for some type of uh, new disease or something there. They said normally, normally one part of the process is they've got to analyze data and stuff like that. And so they fed this uh, computer with like 7,000 things of data, where it was. And then it said to him, find a cure, find a, find a, a um, vaccine for this strain. And it took, took chat AI, it took it like two hours to do it. He said normally it would take everybody like weeks to figure this thing out. So it's funny how, how the AI is going, right? People that didn't have a job. Can imagine some computer geek that loads up Toronto MLS with all the sold data for the last 30 years and gets 
detailed data like detailed data like uh, what it sold for and bedrooms and nails and self view and north view and they just throw throwing all this data here and then you say what's this place worth <laughs> still won't still doesn't mean that somebody won't outbid it but it's kind of a good thing to take our job make our job easier and apparently tdsb on the same vein there they fired somebody who did a research paper for them and the guy was using AI, AI for the research paper and they caught him. So they fired him and they had to start all over again on that. Okay. So then why did you need to have a picture of the It's not the creative thing that is. It's garbage in, garbage out. It's because, because they can, right? Uh, I don't know. Okay. So. You guys thinking about uh, farming? Anybody farming areas? Anybody doing farms? Anybody consider doing farming? You might you might want to consider it. Uh, I think if you look at most uh, most high end real estate agents, uh, I bet you most of them do have some type of farm area, some type of area that they that they go back to on a regular basis. Uh, just to tell you what's going on out there, what the competition is doing. Uh, some people will hook up with the local things. So in other words, in my neighborhood, there was this it's a kids fundraiser. And they had all kinds of booths, all kinds of people there. So this particular realtor had bought a booth in that same little thing and then had their signs up and had their flag up and had their stuff out there. So they were piggybacking what, what someone else was doing to raise money and they just bought a booth and then they had their own thing going on. So that's something that, that as an agent might want to consider doing to try to get some uh, some traction out there. Right? Has to be a farm though. If, if you're not farming or not familiar with you in that area and go ahead and do this type of thing, I'm not sure how that's going to help you as much. But if you already have some presence, then it's sort of going to add to that presence. Has anybody done something like that in the past? Has anybody done, I know people have done client events, like don't even, doesn't have to be this big. I know some, some people, uh, what, last month, two months ago, last month, I think it was, did a, a home, first time home buyers uh, seminar for their clients at Boston Pizza. So in the head about, I don't know, like 10 people show up. So it's something to think about there too. If you want to sort of quiet appreciation or, or some type of seminar or something there, there's something going on. Somebody else went to uh, showing me, maybe maybe you guys know this already, but there's there's Facebook out there. Anybody heard of Facebook? Okay. Yeah, somebody has, right? What they were showing me here, maybe this is here all the time, but on Facebook, if you have a business page, and I could be wrong here, somebody can correct me, but if you have a business page on there, there's a new thing on, or it might be new, maybe not. It's called Ad Transparency. Is that new or old? Mm-hmm. New. All right, there we go. So when you go to Facebook, let's say you go to, I'm going to pick this guy. I'm going to pick uh, Travis Bogner. Who's he? Travis is a guy out in Oshawa. He probably does, I don't know, 40, 50 transactions and it's all done through social media right i don't believe he's doing any physical farming or he's doing any physical advertising i believe it's all social media and so what the agent showed me last week is is, okay you go to this guy's facebook go to the ad transparency okay i don't want to embarrass anybody here but people here have run ads on facebook correct people have, have run listings on facebook you've done you know i've seen people do it and maybe boost it or something there you get a listing to boost it what is that like i don't know five dollars or something twenty dollars but when but when i've seen our, our people do it or some people do it i've seen them do it with like like one listing like they'll do a listing they'll post it and they'll, the way they go right i went to travis's and i did this ad transparency i want to see what he's doing in the facebook world and i bring him up and he's running right now 15 of these ads all at the same time so it's not just so so it's diff- 15 different properties so it's not just one and sort of wait he's running 15 and i thought okay that's interesting maybe i'll check dan plow anybody heard dan plowman checked his ad parency he's got 77 ads being run so i'm just i'm just trying to open your mind a little bit here that like, like if you're if you're thinking about doing like one or two ads why not do 20 ads <laughs> and and with the and you might think well it's too much work okay wait a minute 
I just we just spoke about chat AI, right? Why not take the property, take the description of, of, of the of the you know, it's not your listing, maybe someone else's listing, right? You take the description they put in, stick it in the AI, say give me give me the AI ad in in uh, uh, 20 words or less, and it'll spit it out and stick it on Facebook and then go to the next one. You still need permission, of course, to advertise listings that are not your own, but that's not that hard. Does anybody here get emails from agents saying uh can I advertise your listing? And some some will say in there, if I don't hear back from you, I'll assume it's a yes. Because because you know agents aren't going to answer, right? If you said to an agent, can I advertise your listing? Do you expect him to answer you back? No way. <laughs> right? So you do the so you do the Rogers thing, the reverse, the reverse psychology. Hope you don't mind. I'd like to advertise your 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 property, but I don't hear back from you, I'll assume it's okay. That, that's what we suggest? Yeah. So don't do one, don't do two, do 77. Right? And I'm just talking about Facebook. I mean, what about Instagram and stuff, right? That's the thing. Like, I know that Philip has spent a lot too, but it's obviously working. Okay, so Kim's saying that we spend lots of money. Well, well, well I know, I know. Yeah, I know the Travis price spends 10, 10, 15, 20 grand, right? Yeah. But but you don't have to do that. If you're gonna boost an ad on Facebook, you can be there for what, five bucks? I just have about $50. Like yeah. yeah. But I think you can also target that ad too. Can you not target in that uh, geographic area? Yes, can you so still do that? No. So you, you can't. Can. I know they turned something off, right? So they, it's, I don't know how, I don't know. I used the new CP1 promote. Is that what I did? So on the top 21, you guys have something called CP2 and promote, which lets you create an ad. So I tried to create my own ad by boosting a house from Instagram, got rejected for the housing rules and all that for discrimination. But I don't know what this tool does, but I just picked my listing, but track your listing. You can also do listing ads and Google ads. Pick your budget, pick the target location, and then it like gets approved. I don't know what program. So Kevin is saying that so so through all have access. Yeah, so through uh through Moxie works through C21 promote. If you have your own listing, yes, it's your listing. If you have your own listing, you can you can you can pick. So go to C twenty and promote. See if you got your own listing, you can promote that on Facebook, and somehow it blows it up somehow. How about can we pull up partner with Meta with Facebook, and they get special approvals and can issue products yeah. like this because they're yeah, part of it. Yeah, talked to how easy it was. So if you guys don't know how to do ads, I would do it. You just give your credit card number and it. So those at home, I don't know if you can hear what Kate was saying here, but C21 promote, it's pretty well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just just uh, read the screen. It's for people that- It walks you through, yeah. It's like it, wa it walks through the whole thing there, but if you want to promote something on, on Facebook, that's if you're on the seat. If, if you've got a client that says, hey, why are you seeing any ads? And you're like, okay, I'll do an ad, and then you figure it out. But obviously, you want it to do it on the most good way, but yeah. if you have a client bugging you about that, then I think you need to have a, a checklist too. If you have a listing, you have a checklist and all the things you want to do. But if you don't have a listing, how do you, how would you, how could you use that? I only paid five fifty bucks, and I just got just over four thousand views, which our natural organic advertising got more than that. But I think ninety clicks on the link. Nice. Can you select the counter and then you guys go? Don't think it's that bad. Good. So it's also good for uh, open houses right now with the weather being changed. Open houses are good, as I just said. Somebody did an open house there and got uh, 13 people through. So I'm not sure whether or not they picked up any potential clients, but there's something there. Right? Think about this Facebook thing and uh, maybe expand it a little bit here. Don't you know, don't do one or two. Do do 77. <laughs> uh, Google Ads, same thing. So it's out there. One advantage of me having a, a, a condo downtown is i get to vote for the next mayor even though i you know i don't live in toronto is that legal <clears throat> but if i don't live there can i can i vote in the toronto mayor thing well uh, i don't think we're back up putting in the wrong office says here says here to vote to qualify you have to be a canadian citizen i have to be over 18. a resident in the city of toronto so that knocks me up a non-resident of Toronto, that's me, 
<laughs> but you you were supposed to own or rent a property in the city. Can't sell it. So I can. So can. But you're not taking it. You are renting yeah. property. Oh, you're not renting. If a non-resident of Toronto, but you or your spouse own or rent in the city, uh, aren't you know. glad you didn't sell it? <laughs> no, that, there you go. I think no. You have to look no, I still can't. I still don't have. Why? If you a non-resident. Oh, okay. but you or your spouse own or rent in the city. You own it. You own or rent. Yeah, okay, own. But yeah. So I can vote. Yesterday, somebody was doing an open house, not not uh, anybody I know, but uh, they were walking the street and inviting the neighbors to their open house. What? Hmm? No, the agent was doing the open house. And before the open house, they walked the neighborhood and invited people to their open house and just gave us a little, a little letter and come to my open house. So so we, we've been telling everybody else, we've been telling everybody else to do this. What do you mean? It's so long. We've been telling everybody to do this forever right if you do an open house just don't show up at five to two and then leave at five o'clock get there at one o'clock walk walk the street right see what's going on invite people to the neighborhood the, the big thing about open houses if i'm wrong neighbors don't want to go an open house because they don't want to they don't want the neighbor to think that they are nosy you know what i mean but you as an agent you want the neighbor because you want you want them to see what you've done you want to be able to, to think about you if they think about selling their house so if you invite the neighbor she didn't say this here but if, if in the words and things say, hey, you're invited to the to the pre-open house, right? So now you're invited to a pre-open house, you're giving them permission to look at the house that they want to see anyways. So so it's an opportunity for you to meet somebody, right? If you're walking to the open house and somebody walks in and they say, I don't want to give my email or your cell phone. Could you uh, tell them of which you can come in that sure. you have all your information? Yeah. Cool. You know, the question is if if a, if a if an open house somebody refuses to sign in with their uh, email address or their name, can you refuse to access to the house? Yes, you can. They always give you they complain. But they're but they're gonna give you a fake number anyway, so I don't know. Like, yeah. So just this this goes back to one on one training, okay? So it used to be I don't know if you guys still do it. We used to have feature sheets in the in the house. People still do those. Do do feature sheets and and, if, and if they put feature sheets in the house. Yes. For for what purpose? For what purpose? I don't know. Why why would why do you have this in PDF format and say I have flyers I ran out? Why don't I email you the the flyer? <laughs> Right. This is this is my flyer. It's my last one. <laughs> Give me your email address and I'll email it to you. That's, you know, that seems like an easy way. If they're going to give you, and then if they give you the wrong email address, you can do it right there on the spot. So well, you didn't get it yet. <laughs> give, 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 give me the right one. Or better still, that's right. Uh, uh, that's probably even a better idea. Except that, except that. Um, Okay, so so Alex is saying put a QR code on 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 here, but the QR code all that's going to do is you're going to it's going to take you to the to the URL. No, unless pretty, unless you take the URL, they have to fill out paperwork, right? Mm -hmm. to Google form they have to fill out. Okay. Okay. All right. So again, all right. So address. yeah, you're getting too too sophisticated right now. <laughs> What, 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 what Alex is saying here is you have a QR code on the QR code it takes you to like a jot form or it takes you to a Google Google forms and you fill out the forms with your address and once you fill out the forms and you get the attachment. Right? But I, I don't want to go too that's too tight for some folks. That automatically just gives you their actual email address. Just Google and auto fill your actual email address. Okay. It doesn't really matter. So you understand the, the concept, right? So, Anybody have any properties you want to talk about? Properties, properties, no? What's, what's everybody's assignment for uh, what, uh, nine o'clock every day? Not nine o'clock, 10, 10, 10.30 every day? Okay. Just, spend, just spend 10 minutes and send somebody an offer on SkySlope? Take a certain apple pop and not wait. Right. Send your mother an offer. <laughs> <laughs> no sign back. There's no, no sign no back. back. Actually, SkySo is pretty slick because on on uh, Fendesign, if you wanted to add a clause, you've got to add it to the original document. Then you have to upload it to the document. 
Whereas on Skyslope, if you're actually in the document, you say, gee, I want to add something or change something, you go to text to change it. And as being the author, you can change it live and send it off. So it's just some little things that are pretty slick. So anybody else, any problems you want to talk about? Buyers, sellers? Going, 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 going. Buyers, yeah, buyer, sellers, yeah, somebody's got a question. I don't have any. Can you give me some? Sure. <laughs> hey, folks. Sorry. Uh, oh, that's right. So, what's the okay? So, everybody knows that too. I, I don't think you can broker it anyways. With a, um, I just had one agent call me with questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to so everybody knows that right on June 1st, uh, the pin the pin is already mandatory on June 1st, the room dimensions will be mandatory. And something on July, what's July? Something else is mandatory. Square footage is mandatory and Trev is supposed to give us uh, some type of tool to figure out what that is. If you want, if you want. I've been spending a good Wednesday session. And how to win in Perfect. Okay, so we have a session on Wednesday, ten thirty. How to win now? Is it uh, live? Yeah. Okay, folks. All right. Thank you very much.